You know, sometimes it's tough about something that just really, really gobsmacks you and just knocks you out, basically incapacitates you for three or four days. When it turns out in the end, no permanent damage was done. No one was killed in my family. No one was crippled or maimed or hurt, but we got hurt pretty badly over the last several days, so we thought we'd tell you about it. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with uh, Steve Green and Scott Ott. And for those of you who uh, may be new to this uh, channel or, or me or whatever, uh, in 2016, I, I, I met and married a, a Russian woman who I love very much, my wife Natasha. Um, we did everything the way that we're supposed to do things. She came here on a tourist visa. We met, fell in love. I asked her to marry me. Uh, once she was here, we immediately went to U.S. Customs, hired an immigration attorney. We, we made the application for the, um, the, the permanent resident card, the so-called green card. We had to prove that we were still together, that we were in fact an actual couple, that this wasn't something that was done for, you know, financial reasons. We showed photographs of us over the course of the previous six months. We did an awful lot of money and a lot, a lot of time. An official at Customs said, I believe you, we're going to issue you your, your temporary uh, green card. And after a year or two, whatever it was, that became a permanent green card. And then we went through a period of a one-year wait, which was mandatory. Then we began the process of her becoming a U.S. citizen. And she was getting 100 out of 100 on the citizenship test and uh, became a U.S. citizen in May of 2022. So far, so good. When Natasha first came to America, shortly after, we applied uh, for her daughter, went to the U.S. Embassy and applied for a tourist visa to come to the United States so she could see her mother and her new stepfather. And, and that application was declined. And that was heartbreaking and had been heartbreaking for five or six years. And then uh, just a few days ago, she reapplied for a tourist visa to the United States of America and was declined. And the reason that she was declined was because she had a mother who lived in the United States and the embassy position was, well, you're going to go to America and you're simply going to disappear. You're going to become a, a criminal and we'll never see you again. And my response to this was not pleasant. Uh, Steve, the short form of it is, well, first, the, the first thing I need to say is that for several hours, I, I just genuinely hated this country. And it took me a moment. It took me that long for me to grab myself by the collar and remind myself the difference between the country and the government. But what had made me so incredibly embittered and gobsmacked by all of this, aside from the heartbreak of my wife and my stepdaughter, was the idea that because we had done everything the, the honest, legal way— and because we had applied for the tourist visa by being honest about this, we were counseled, don't ever tell them that you've got a, a parent living in the U.S. because they'll, they'll never approve it. We, why would we lie? We did everything the way we're supposed to do things. We, from the beginning, we, we took all of the legal steps in the correct order and spent a fair amount of money doing it too. Surely that is an indication that this stepdaughter is not going to be uh, just gone but disappearing, but no. So... That is That was a hard thing to take, Steve, but when you add the number of people that just walk across the border on any given day in, the, in, in America and, and the federal government that just declined the tourist visa for my stepdaughter is down there preventing the Border Patrol and the state of Texas from enforcing the border so that 200,000 illegal people can come over every day or month or whatever the number is, I found that very hard to swallow. Yeah, and... And you really should. And first of all, I'd just like to offer my condolences. What a terrible, yeah. awful thing you and Natasha and, and, and your stepdaughter have been going through these these last few days, these last few years. It's, it's, it's inexcusable. A um, couple of things I'd like to say. One, if you're going to have a certain level of lawlessness when it comes to immigration, um, the, uh, the, the well-educated woman from Russia is exactly the kind of person you want coming into this country and making a new life here, not the, uh, the, the wannabe terrorist from Somalia who's using our open southern border to slip in to you know, start stabbing people in Times Square. Um, you know, I've, I've got my preferences, and, and I, li I like the, 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 the nice people from other Western countries, not the, uh, the would-be jihadis. I have biases. Yeah, I'm kind of that way, too. Yeah. Um, that said, uh, we, we all know our legal immigration system is probably just as awful as our illegal immigration non-system. It's just, it's, it's too damn difficult. It's too damn expensive. Uh, the rules are impossible. And they, they as you said, they, they punish the people who are honest and, and try to do things right. But that, that is part of the, the broader picture of this progressive bureaucracy that's been growing like barnacles on Washington, D.C. for the last hundred or so years. 
Um, leftism, progressivism, I might use those terms interchangeably, although there are right-wing progressive as, as well. But leftism is essentially a war on merit. Um, you mm. can't have people getting what they have earned, getting what they've worked hard for, getting what they deserve, because when that happens, that kind of thing happens in a, in a free marketplace. And you don't get to have uh, otherwise useless bureaucrats, otherwise useless elected officials, or otherwise useless HR departments, or now DEI departments, picking the winners and losers according to standards that have nothing to do with merit, that have to do with political pull, that have to do with uh, uh, establishing more and more grievances between us instead of trying to bring us together. Um, it has to do with uh, picking winners and losers based on the color of their skin instead of the content of their character. It is, it is all of these things. And if that means that a, a bright young woman can't come and visit her mom and her stepdad, well, Bill, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. <laughs> no. And, um, in I'm the, sorry to have the... to say that. No, it'd be too. And, and, and in the, the letter I sent to my stepdaughter outlining the, 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 what I thought was the correct answer to whatever questions they may get, one of the, one of the role-playing questions I said, well, how do we know that you're going to uh, you know, go back to Russia? How do we know you're not going to just stay here on the, on the U.S. visa? It was, well, my mother did things the legal way. I have property in Russia. My, my mother, which would be her grandmother, rather, is, is in Russia. Uh, there are other things that are, that are taking her back there. And, and, the, and the answer was, if I decide that I would like to live in America, then I will do what my mother did, which is go to the immigration service and announce my intentions and see if I can qualify for the green card and so on. So, Scott, here's what it comes down to. For quite a long time now in this society, we've been punishing the innocent. Uh, I think we mentioned this on a backstage show. Uh, this is California, but California is just somewhat ahead of where the progressives are trying to take the entire country. Uh, we, My wife uh, makes some jewelry, and we needed one of these little tiny butane torch lighters. They're just cigarette lighters, essentially. You know. And um, looked at them on Amazon, and they said, we cannot deliver this to your address because they cannot send uh, butane lighters to California because Governor Newsom has banned butane lighters because apparently some people ordered some butane lighters and they either hurt themselves or tried to hurt somebody else, and so we have to punish the innocent. When I had a kidney stone uh, many, many years ago, I had to sit in absolute agony. That They're not stones, by the way. They're sand burrs. They're the n nastiest things in the world. And I had to sit there in incredible pain for four and a half hours because the narcotics were locked up four stories above because of the drug addicts coming into the hospital at nighttime, stealing them. And so the genuinely honest people who, who need these things are punished because we can't punish the guilty. We have to punish the innocent. And what I was left with, Scott, uh, was, was this sense that the immigration policy of the United States now is to keep out the honest. That's, that's, that's the job. And, and when I think about what we went through with this, again, you know, no one was killed or anything, but but this incident is not unique. Every single day, there are people who deserve to be Americans, who are making applications to become Americans, to come here, to work hard, to obey the laws, and they are being declined or held up for five, six, seven, or eight years, while the same government that is denying them is preventing our Border Patrol from stopping hundreds of thousands of people coming in illegally, it really, really makes you want to say, well, I'm tired of being a chump here and doing the right thing. I'll just have her go to Mexico, walk forward, hand over a couple thousand dollars, and not only she get into the country tomorrow, she'd probably get food stamps and, and all kinds of other benefits as well. You know, there are, this reminds me of the, the TV show Person of Interest, which has been off the air for a number of years, where they had this massive computer that was able to uh, predict with uh, almost certainty when people were about to commit crimes. And so therefore they were uh, able to intercept them before they committed the crimes in some cases. Um, and it seems like uh, everybody is being evaluated according to what I'll call the immoral person standard. Um, and so you are assumed guilty until proven otherwise. But in this case, the person doesn't even get to prove otherwise. Uh, and I think from from a bureaucratic viewpoint, uh, what bureaucrats do, whether they're in government or in the uh, private sector, is 
Uh, they think in terms of there, there's an old saying uh, in the computer business that nobody ever got fired for hiring IBM. In other yeah. words, uh, IBM was Play so successful safe. because everybody knew the the guys in the blue suits were were reliable, and you you weren't going to get fired even if it didn't go well because you hired IBM. And I think to a certain extent, the kind of bureaucrat that processed your daughter's application has this mindset that, hey, nobody ever gets reprimanded for rejecting a Russian tourist visa. That's never, there you go. <laughs> that's never gonna reflect badly on your record. Um, and on the border, no border guard is ever gonna get reprimanded for welcoming somebody, helping them across the river, getting them through the barbed wire if necessary here in Texas. Um, and uh, because basically there, stopping somebody or pushing them back uh, causes a potential for injury or harm. And um, the, the failure to give them due process is considered to be cruelty. And so I, I, I'm not that I'm defending the bureaucrats, but I know how organizational thinking goes. That's right. They live in their Dilbert world and they know they're not going to get in trouble for rejecting her visa. They're not going to get in trouble for helping a guy across the river and, and they want to keep their jobs. I mean, they're people who, who like to work and get paid and things like that. So the problem is that bad laws tempt good people to deceit. As you're suggesting, why wouldn't you just do it the way hundreds of thousands of other people are doing it rather than follow the bureaucratic procedure? And and I think you can there's kind of a fuzzy line between doing the right thing and following the bureaucratic procedure, but let's just assume they're one and the same thing. If you follow the bureaucratic procedure, you're doing the right thing. Um, especially in cases where there's no obvious moral breach. Uh, there's no obvious evil being done here. Letting a young woman into our country to visit her parents doesn't have Special any... Special photographer in her mid-30s, yeah. Yes, does not have any obvious, you know, she's she's not running drugs. She's not smuggling uh, sex slaves. You know, she's there's no obvious moral breach here. Um, and, and, and I don't know if there's a good way to resolve this other than a top-to-bottom re-examination of how we handled these procedures, uh, but it seems insane to the average person uh, that we welcome in hundreds of thousands of people who have made a conscious decision because for whatever reason, they're not willing to wait in line. Uh, you know, 14 million people want to come in and only 50,000 are allowed or whatever the numbers are. Uh, meanwhile, here's somebody who's waited for years and does the paperwork and all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't blame you for your anger it's not symptomatic of who we are as a nation. It is symptomatic of how difficult it is to do anything effectively through a massive centralized government. Yeah, and I think that's really the problem. Uh, you, you, I think you put your finger on it, Scott. I'm just going to uh, buff this up, just what you said just a little bit. The, the success of America as a country is extraordinarily – well, the, the, the historically unprecedented success of America – in my opinion, was because this this society was set up so that doing the right thing and doing the smart thing meant doing the same thing. Yeah, uh, and that is no longer the case. Um, and and we will not long survive when doing the right thing and doing the smart thing are antithetical to each other. People like me and people like you, if you're watching this, will continue to do the right thing, but everywhere along the margins. As that gap between the right thing and the smart thing starts to increase and increase and increase, more and more people, and I think with some justification, will say, I'm tired of being a chump. I'm, t I'm tired of, of waiting in line and watching people cut in front of me and cut in front of me and cut in front of me and cut in front of me. Now I'm going to start doing some cutting too because I've been, been left with no choice. This is much bigger than the immigration issue. It's much certainly much bigger than my personal problems. If we as a country have decided now that either through bureaucratic inertia or intentional design or whatever the case may be, that doing the right thing and doing the smart thing are no longer doing the same thing, then uh, we have uh, very little time left. And I'm not worried about the future of the country. I just think that the reset is going to be, um, the longer that we put it off, the, the worse it's going to be. Uh, we will, uh, speaking for myself and my family, we will continue to do the right thing. 
and not the smart thing. Because uh, we believe, as so many of you do, and as I know Steve and Scott and, and, and our viewers and our members believe, that there are long-term rewards for uh, short-term uh, disadvantages. And uh, whenever I'm given a choice of doing the right thing and the smart thing, I'm going to pick doing the right thing and uh, damn the torpedoes as far as that goes. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time here on Right Angle.